So, uh, call Giovanni Bolognese. The new formulation of an arm of bone generalized thermodynamics. Thanks. Actually, there was an earlier 
formulation by Umura in 1956 in quaternal formalism without Lagrangian. Uh, but in any case, even after the paper by uh, Arnold and Bohm, there were no further uh, developments of this theory. Probably because it, it's a theory with restricted gauge invariants. And so at the time of, of uh, gauge theories, of, uh, so at the time there, there was a big success of gauge theories in, for fundamental particles, and this theory did not have fully edge variants. It was assumed by two people, uh, Van Blandern in quaternion formalism and then in 3D vector formalism. And also um, as an attempt to explain some experiments. So in, in, without Lagrangians, but um, in the form of additional terms in the Maxwell equations. These are the publication. One is in a journal uh, called the Dronic Journal, which is not one of the mainstream journals in physics. And another one is just an archive uh, physics document. And then there was the work of uh, Heidi and Jacos in 2012. This is also done in 3D vector formalism. And they try to find the relation between theory and their own experience um, concerning the, the possible longitudinal components of the electromagnetic waves. Because this is one of the, of the outcomes of the generalized theory. And this is also, in some way, um, mainstream work. It is published in the International Journal of Signal and Imaging Systems Engineering but not uh, really mainstream uh, theoretical physics. I came in contact uh, with uh, these two authors. <coughs> and all these authors realized that uh, first uh, the theory has only restricted gauge invariants. So we can do gauge transformations, but only with uh, the functions phi that satisfy this equation. So uh, harmonic uh, and this means that uh, the, the scalar field, uh, the four, the, the, the four um, divergence of the, of the um, uh, potential four vector, which uh, in Maxwell theory can be cancelled as the gauge transformation by the usual uh, choice of the Lorentz gauge, in this case uh, remains in the theory as a dynamical system. And in fact, uh, it is equivalent uh, to the presence of the wave solutions of uh, a longitudinal component. And um, Van Blandern, so this uh, Van Blandern and Heidi and, and Jacobs, they claim it has been observed. Uh, the problem, however, is that uh, the source of this color field of this additional uh, degree of freedom is the four divergence of the uh, current. Uh, so partial alpha, J alpha, this is the source of the field. So if the four divergence is zero, uh, which is uh, usually the case when charge is locally conserved, then this field actually is decoupled from matter and uh, does not, does not have any, any significance. Uh, but there are projectors of situations where there could be a violation of this continuity equation, or the, of the continuity equation for charge, which means uh, that the charge will, will still be conserved, but not locally at any point. Maybe in some cases just over some uh, volumes, for instance. And uh, so Van Blander speculated that uh, there could be a violation of continuity in uh, coherent tunneling, but, and, and he gave no details about this. And Heidi and Jaco speculated that uh, there could be effect uh, maybe of charge fluctuation, so charge conservation could be just an average property, but the fluctuation could 
what questions could be an effect on this generalized Maxwell theory. Or possibly an indirect effect, uh, for instance, at boundary conditions, at interfaces between materials and so on. So, what are now in this context my results? The first one is a compact reformulation of the standard four dimensional formulas, which is much more compact. Because I, I uh, yes, the, the, the modified Maxwell equations are not so simple in the usual 3D form. And then the second point, I found that it is possible to solve the equations for S. So S, this color field, can be completely eliminated from the theory. And also the coupling constant lambda can be completely eliminated. And uh, I obtained some straight equations which give the observable uh, electromagnetic tensor, F mu nu, just in terms of the current of the source. All this formalism, uh, um, of course, boils down to Maxwell theory if the, con the current is locally conserved. But if it is not, there are possible applications as a generalized theory. First, to some exotic situations, uh, like situations involving chiral anomaly, AVJ, ABJ anomaly, with instantons and multiple, multiple vacua, which can occur, for instance, in general relativity. In general relativity, uh, you can have extreme situations uh, with wormholes, for, for instance, connecting to separated spaces. So it is conceivable that at some point some charge disappears and uh, the uh, local observation is not satisfied. Also, um, the ABJ anomaly has been investigated recently by many authors, but as an anomaly in momentum space, which I don't, I think it might be connected to what I'm saying here, but maybe not. Uh, as an um, anomaly momentum space, for, for instance, for the so-called uh, uh, wild semi nickels but uh, uh, not in configuration space. Uh, one uh, result uh, uh, I found, uh, which I like it, that uh, in any case, in this theory, there is a sort of censorship of chart non-conservation, which means if uh, the four divergence of the uh, four current is not zero, uh, even if it is not zero, the um, F, the tensor, the electromagnetic tensor, in the end, when we look at the equation, it is still generated by an effective conserving current, which is the sum, the sum of the physical current, J, plus another current coming out of the equation. So the non-conservation is, uh, can we say, unobservable because how can we look at the charge to see if it is conserved? Just observing the electromagnetic fields, field it generates. But uh, uh, the electromagnetic field uh, is generated by an effective current which is always conserved. Another very interesting feature is that uh, the, the electromagnetic field which comes out of the equation can have some feature with features which are, uh, let's say, not Maxwellian, nothing like the usual uh, solutions of Maxwell equations. And this is because the additional current uh, is a non local function of the, the physical current. And then I will tell you about uh, um, more detailed conjectures about possible situations where there is non-local conservation of charge. For instance, uh, uh, in the tunneling in Georgeson junctions, in particular uh, for high TC superconductors. And if there is time, I will show you some exact solutions of the uh, 
Now, very briefly, uh, let me say how the new equations are derived. Uh, these are the uh, familiar Maxwell equations. Uh, in the four dimensional formulation, we have the electromagnetic tensor. The component of this tensor are uh, just the electric and magnetic. We have the four potential, we have the four current. The continuity equation is written like this. So, uh, in three dimensional form, or uh, we can see here the, the four dimensional uh, version. And the Maxwell equations uh, are rewritten in terms of the F union tensor. These equation are the equations are derived from the Lagrangian, um, which has this form. And the Lagrangian contains a term, uh, which is the, this one. So this term, this part of the Lagrangian. One pointer? Uh, yes, please. transformation on, on this Lagrangian, uh, the variation of the Lagrangian is this one. And so if the current is conserved, the variation of the Lagrangian in the gauge transformation is a four divergence. So the Lagrangian is a uh, gauge uh, So the additional term proposed by Aronoff and Bohm uh, is this one. Now, if we take the minimal Lagrangian plus this term, we find new uh, field equations. This additional term is not a four divergence, of course, otherwise everything will be trivial. And the new equations uh, uh, have an additional term compared to the Maxwell equations. So the, the, this first part is just like the Maxwell equation, and then there is this additional term. Uh, the arm of bond Lagrangian is not gauge invariant, as I said. And in fact, we can see that uh, if we make a uh, gauge transformation of the, of, the, of the Lagrangian, we obtain uh, all this expression, which is zero only if uh, the the field of the gauge uh, transform the, the function of the gauge transformation is an unknown function. So we cannot impose the impose the uh, the Lorentz gauge in this theory. We must keep uh, the for the values of the uh, vector potential, and uh, we call it S. Uh, which is what uh, Aronoff and Wall called the omega. And this is a new degree of freedom. But, uh, as I uh, show now, it can be completely eliminated, so we can solve for it. Uh, 
Um, in fact, if we take the, the derivative of the force field equation, we find this equation, uh, which can be inverted. You see here, let, let's take S as unknown. We can invert it. And so we write S in this form. Um, this is a non-local expression because we have this operator partial times uh, uh, to partial two times two, which is the um, so partial it uh, also written sometimes uh, like a square the Dalbertian operator. In my case, partial is uh, the partial alpha times. So the contractor with partial So we can pass to momentum space and we can find uh, the field S is given by this expression. But uh, it is not so interesting. What is more interesting, we go back to the equation and plug this uh, expression into the, into the equation found from the Lagrangian. And so we find uh, the, the, the final equation for the field uh, strength F nu nu in two versions, let me say. The first version, which is the most simple and useful, is this one, where we have this additional term on the right. And this additional uh, four current is given uh, as a function of the physical uh, current J, which may be not conserved. If we want to write another version for the four potential, that becomes more complicated. Because the four potential, so it's, it's the same as before, then you just expand the, the field strength, and uh, you have to add the, the equation I had the whole uh, for the fourth potential, for the for the divergence of the fourth potential, which is a sort of a fixed uh, gauge condition, a very complicated gauge condition, which can be obtained with an obtainable gauge condition, but it is quite complicated. So uh, the quantum version of this theory in quantum field theory looks very complicated. If you want to quantize it and, and promote the A field to a quantum operator looks very complicated. Um, but uh, it seems to me that the classical equations are interesting enough. Uh, the, the current on the right here is conserved, as I, I told you before. J is the physical current and P is an additional current generated by the dynamics. This is easy to prove, the conservation is easy to prove. And as I said, there is a censorship, censorship property because the observable field is only generated by a conserved current. So looking at the field, you will never see a non conserved the effect of the non conserved part of the current. Um, now, I have some examples of uh, stationary solutions. Very briefly, uh, you can uh, we'll just uh, sketch this. You can put uh, in the origin, in the, in the source, a part which is not conserved, like a sink for the charge, or a so or source for the charge. And and you can easily find a solution of the equations just using known te techniques for the solution of the equations. Because because that there are many formal similarities. Even though uh, this theory is not cage invariant, but you can use the same techniques. So for instance, if we have these two components of the current, this is a regular current uh, with uh, zero for divergence, and this is a, a sort of source of where charge comes out of nothing. It, it doesn't have zero divergence. This second part of the current 
gives rise to an additional term in the current, what they call E, which has this form. And it is not local, it spreads all around in space, essentially like a, an electric field, because it's the solution of, of the same equation. Okay, uh, but I would like to, uh, to go back to the presentation and speak a bit about this conjecture. That, that would be the non-local conservation or local non-conservation of uh, charge in thundering phenomena. Um, so, let me put it first very in a very naive way. What does it mean, non-local charge conservation? Well, it means that charge disappears at one point and reappears at another point and there is no current in, in between. Like a charge disappears in the sand, like a flow of water which disappears in the sand and reappears in another place. Of course, uh, if we if we consider chiral anomaly with uh, two separated vacua, this is conceivable because the two points could be in different spaces. But are there possible real situations in the laboratory where this could happen? So again, we imagine to have some current which we uh, can switch off. There is global conservation but not local conservation. So if we look at the, at the full picture or the bigger scale, there is conservation but not the microscopic level. This is an extreme scenario. A less extreme scenario could be not just that the, the current just disappears, but that uh, the, the, the density times the velocity of the current is not constant. Because this is what is required by conservation. If we write this, um, suppose we have a stationary flow. So the conservation is just this equation here in one dimension, in a uh, one dimensional flow. Djx uh, over dx, if, if it is different from zero, this means that uh, rho times u is not a constant. Could it be that rho times u is not a constant? In other words, in quantum mechanics, the flow continuity is the exception or is the rule? If we look at the Schrodinger constant equation, of course, this is true. We know the continuity equation with respect. respect. And this is uh, verified experimentally. For instance, with uh, scanning tunneling, scanning tunneling microscopes. There are some problems you find in the literature about, uh, of works about the tunneling time. Um, so it seems that for certain processes the tunneling time is super minimal. And there are processes for which you cannot write a conserved current, current uh, uh, like the Schrodinger conserved current. And so it was suggested by uh, Van Blander. Another possible situation could be in Johnson junctions. I could not imagine, of course, that today Professor Johnson would be here. Uh, so I hope I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing this right. Um, we know uh, that uh, the general uh, theory of Johnson tunneling is quite simple. Uh, we, if we have a junction, we write the equations. Uh, which couple the wave function on one side to the wave function on the other side. And these equations are very general and are quite independent uh, from what happens inside the junction. Then you can also write what happens inside in certain cases. For instance, uh, if you have lofty, lofty superconductors, you, have, you, you can write uh, um, uh, BCS wave function even inside the junction and this BCS wave function has a conserved current 
even if you have IGC superconductors, <coughs> there is no business theory for this, but the Ginsburg Landau theory still applies. You can write a Ginsburg Landau uh, wave function inside the junction, and these still have a conserved current. So, in these known cases, the current is always conserved. Uh, must be said. However, um, there are some unclear points about ITC superconductors. For instance, I have to close now, but uh, uh, it seems that uh, the, the Ginsburg Landau scale, uh, the Ginsburg Landau scale in ITC superconductors is very, very short. So it is not yet explained how there can be Josephson tunneling uh, in ATC superconductors when the, the junctions, the junctions are, very, uh, are very large. So possibly the flow continuity is not true sure because we, in, a, in, a, in a large junction we have that uh, the, the density can decrease as much as by six orders of magnitude. Now, what should we suppose? That the velocity of the flow should increase by six, or six order of magnitude to keep the, to keep the flow uh, continuity. It is quite unlikely for, for, for many different reasons. Because uh, there are relativistic limitations and we call it impossible to obtain such an acceleration over one micrometer in the junction. So the situation is a, uh, something like this. We have the density, the, if the blue here is the junction, which, which can be, for instance, a gray boundary, a superconductor, or a gray or whatever. We have the density which goes to zero very quickly, and the velocity should increase to keep the, the flow continuity, but the velocity cannot increase to, uh, to the extent required. So we could have a number bound at the velocity, and so the j would actually drop almost to zero, and here we would have a non-conservation, the local non-conservation, and of course then with opposite sign on the other, on the other side. As I told you, this is, these are just uh, conjectures and speculations about uh, a possible uh, interesting application of the questions I, I showed you before. So, thank you. Imagine there could be some no conservation in the case when there are singularities in the equations. Um, in general, I think people in cosmology assume that uh, even if the university is uh, expanding, charge conservation is taken for granted. Right, but it may not be right. Mm -hmm. And you're showing some potential alternatives here, possibly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, of course, a generalized theory which does not uh, has this requirement uh, encoded in the theory can be useful. Um, 
I, I didn't have to kill that question. And the second question was, uh, uh, sorry. Well, are, is there an equivalent? The Lorentz transformations are well known and you know, they're nicely and they're part of special relativity. Uh, and, and, and they're associated with the original Maxwell equations. Now you've modified those equations. Is there an equivalent mod modified Lorentz pipe transformation that, that is available somewhere to look at? I mean, you mentioned gauge invariance, I mean, well, Lorentz gauge, so that's got to be modified now. I mean, what are those transformations? I don't think Lorentz uh, so generalized Lorentz transformations are needed because everything is written in the in the standard Lorentz invariant way. So gauge invariance is broken, but Lorentz invariance is, is concerned. Uh, I think so. Yes. May I? May I? Thanks. Please, uh, Modelice, just a question. Do you mind to go back to the pictures, uh, to that one when change disappears in E and appears in B? Yes, this one. Just this one. And so, do you have any view, any idea, any suggestion about the time interval between E and B? No, no. Uh, no, as I said, that there are some uh, some cases where it is thought to be supernominal. Uh, uh, In any case, uh, the time interval is different by zero. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, there are just uh, there are there is literature about this uh, supernominal tunneling times. It's quite complicated. Okay. Again, do you mind to go back uh, to? The same picture, thanks. Well, should it be possible, according to your opinion, to set uh, an uncertainty principle like uh, for the change, uh, like an Eisenberg principle for the change, for the electrical change? I mean, the variation of uh, change times the variation of time must be a limit, something like this. Yes, it should be possible, and it has been done in uh, particle physics, for instance, in the uh, ABJ anomaly, mm -hmm. this sort of uh, quantum correction to the classical theory. But in any case, in the brain world of a uh, quiet and absolutely respected and valid the Lorentz invariance, local Lorentz invariance, isn't it? According yes. to your opinion, obviously you already answered yes, this uh, topic. Yes, in that case. Uh, yeah. This is uh, the point. If you like, according to uh, Guglielmo di Corona Lanza, William Shakespeare, <laughs> this is the question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much.